judgment in the appeal, the Queen on the application of B Sky B against the Commissioner of Police for the Metropolis. Lord Tilson will give an explanation of the judgment of the court. The Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984 contains various provisions under which police conducting a criminal investigation and who have reasonable cause to believe an indictable offence has been committed can ask a court for an order to enable them to gather evidence either from a suspect or from someone else who they have good cause to believe is in possession of relevant evidence which is likely to be of substantial value. The Act dictates how such an application is to be made and what, if any, additional conditions have to be satisfied. Ordinarily, an application for a search warrant can be made to a magistrate by what is known as an ex parte procedure. This means that the occupier of the premises is not required to be given advance notice and is not present at the hearing of the application. There are obviously good practical reasons for that procedure. But the ordinary procedure does not apply where what the police are looking for comprises or includes journalistic material. In such cases, Parliament has laid down a special procedure, the details of which are set out in Schedule 1 to the Act. We are concerned in this case with the interpretation and application of that schedule. Under the schedule, the police can, in certain circumstances, apply for a production order, that is, an order requiring the person who's in possession of the material to provide access to the police. The schedule sets out tight conditions which must be satisfied and also sets out the procedure to be followed. The issue in this case is not about the conditions but about the procedure. The application must be made to a circuit judge and paragraph 7 of the schedule states that it must be made inter partes. In this context, the parties are not the police and the person under investigation, but the police and the person against whom a production order is sought. It is easy to see that this type of case is likely to involve a clash between two public interests, the public interest in the prosecution of crime and the public interest in the protection of journalism. The judge has to strike a balance, which may be difficult, but the inter-parties procedure provides an opportunity for the application to be fully tested and arguments presented on both sides. A dispute has arisen in this case about the practical effect of the requirement that the application is to be made into parties. The factual background can be summarized very shortly. In March 2011, uh, officers from the Metropolitan Police arrested two military officers on suspicion of having committed offences under the Official Secrets Act 1989. The alleged offences concerned suspected leaking of secret information from meetings of the Cabinet Security Committee, known as COBRA, to the security editor of B Sky B. The police informed B Sky B that a criminal investigation had begun and sought disclosure of various documents, including copies of all emails between the officers and the uh, security editor over recent months. Uh, on, in uh, uh, April 2011, the police served an application for a production order under the Act on B Sky B, supported by a statement signed by a detective sergeant. Negotiations between the police and B Sky B to see if the matter could be resolved without a court hearing failed, and the police's application for the production order uh, was heard on the 26th of April and 3rd May 2011 by a circuit judge at the Old Bailey, with uh, the police and B Sky B both uh, legally represented. Both sides had put in skeleton arguments and witness statements. The police made an application to adduce further evidence from the detective sergeant in the absence of B Sky B's representatives. B Sky B objected, but the judge allowed the detective sergeant to give evidence in the absence of representatives of B Sky B. 
uh, he then made the production order for reasons which he gave in his judgment. B. Sky B applied for judicial review of the judge's decision. The divisional court quashed the production order. It held, applying this court's judgment in Arawi and the Security Service, that it was impermissible for the court to receive evidence <coughs> which was kept from the other party. <coughs> the police appealed, the criminal investigation has been dropped, and the two military officers have been informed that they will not be prosecuted, but the appeal has continued because of the question of principle which it involves. The court agrees with the decision of the divisional court. It agrees with the argument of the police that the al rawi principle would not ordinarily apply to applications made by a party or a prospective party to litigation to use the procedural powers of the court to obtain evidence for the purpose of the litigation. Uh, they are um, ancillary proceedings intended uh, not to determine a party's legal rights as such, but to enable a fair trial. However, in this case, Parliament has established a unique procedure which requires the application to be made into parties. The question for the court is a short point about the meaning and effect of paragraph 7 of Schedule 1 to the Act. In the judgment of this court, the requirement that the application be made into parties is inconsistent with evidence being given only partly in the presence of both sides and partly ex parte, i.e. in the absence of one side. The appeal is therefore dismissed. In accordance with the court's standard practice, the draft judgment in the B Sky B case was made available last week on a strictly confidential basis uh, to the lawyers acting for the parties. This is to enable the lawyers to suggest corrections, and that helps to ensure that the court's judgments are as clear and accurate as possible. Unfortunately, in the B Sky B case, one of the lawyers, in breach of the court's directions, communicated the result to someone who was not part of the legal team, and as a consequence, uh, the decision was leaked in a Sunday newspaper. It is self-evidently very important that lawyers respect confidentiality and that they obey court directions. If this regrettable lapse recurs, we will be forced to review our practice of making judgments available in advance to the party's legal teams. The court's now adjourned.